of the day, the, the vigil of All Saints, tomorrow All Saints Day, but uh, today we read from the breviary, and also the uh, breviary today is reading through the book of Maccabees, and, this, uh, and then the, the Maccabees, the, the time of the Maccabees is our times. We are now in the time of the Maccabees of the New Testament, where the church is divided up into seven ages, and the seventh age is one day, that is a day of judgment. The day when the Lord Jesus Christ will come to judge living the dead. The seventh day of the Old Testament was Holy Saturday. The day when the Lord slept in the grave, in the tomb and visited the, the, uh, uh, the he, he slept in the tomb and he visited the, uh, the souls in purgatory. And then also we have the, uh, uh, and now in the, 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 in the this, this fifth age, what we're at the end of right now, in the fifth age, the age of decay. The age of the decay of Christendom, and that age in the Old Testament ended with the Maccabees, and that uh, 153 years before Christ, Judas Maccabeus purified the temple, and the uh, very similar times, the, the time of the Maccabees to our present time, and now we read in <coughs> chapter six of the book of Maccabees, the second book. The two books are not part one and part two, but they cover the same exact. Uh, uh, History, just one covers certain elements that the other one doesn't cover. And here in the second book of Maccabees, History of the Maccabees, we have the reading we've taken the sacred scripture today, and then we'll read this. But not long after, the king, Antiochus, who is a type of the Antichrist, but not long after, the king sent a certain old man of Antioch to compel the Jews to depart from the laws of their fathers and of God and to defile the temple that was in Jerusalem, and to call it the temple of Jupiter Olympus, and that in, 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 in Gazarim of Jupiter of Hospitalis, according as they were that inhabited the place. And very bad was the, this invasion of evils, and grievous to all. For the temple was full of the riot and revelings of the Gentiles, and of men lying with lewd women, and women thrust themselves of their accord into the holy places, and brought in things that were not lawful. The altar was also filled with unlawful things, which were forbidden by the laws. And neither were the Sabbaths kept, nor the solemn days of the fathers observed. Neither did any man plainly profess himself to be a Jew. But they were led by bitter constraint on the king's birthday to the sacrifices, and when the feast of Bacchus was kept, they were compelled to go about crowned with ivy in honor of Bacchus. And there went out a decree into the neighboring cities of the Gentiles by the suggestion of the Ptolemaeans that they should act like in like manner against the Jews to oblige them to sacrifice. And whosoever would not conform themselves to the ways of the Gentiles should be put to death. Then was misery to be seen. For two women were accused to have circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led about, they had, been, they had been openly been led about through the city, with the infants hanging at their breasts, they threw down them headlong from the walls. And others that had met together in caves, and were near and, and were keeping the Sabbath day privately, being discovered by Philip, were burnt with fire, because they had made a conscience to help themselves with their hands by reason of the religious observance of that day. Now I beseech them book, that they should not be shocked at these circumstances, but that they consider the things that happened not as being for the destruction, but for the correction of our nation. For it is a token of great good that they punished. For not as with other nations, whom the Lord patiently expected that, that, that when the day of judgment shall come, he may punish them and then take vengeance upon us. Therefore, he never withdraws his mercy from us. But though he chastises his people with adversity, he forsaketh them not. But let this suffice in a few words for a warning to the readers. And now we must come to the narration. Eleazar, one of the chiefs, uh, one of the chief of the scribes, a man advanced in years and of a comely countenance, <clears throat> was oppressed to open his mouth to eat swine's flesh. But he, choosing rather a most glorious death than a hateful life, went forward voluntarily to the torment. And considering in what manner he was come to it, he 
completely barren, he determined not to do any unlawful things for the love of life. But they that stood by, being moved with wicked pity for the old friend, that he might make as if he had eaten, as the king had commanded, of the flesh of the sacrifice, that by so doing he might be delivered from death. And for the sake of their old friendship with the man, they did him this courtesy. And he began to consider the dignity of his age, and his ancient years, and his, in, in, in his inbred honor of his gray head, and his good life and conversation from a child. And he considered of the holy, uh, 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 of the, and he considered the ordinances of the holy lay, of the, of the holy, holy lay made by God, saying that he would rather be sent into another world. For it doth not become our old age, said he, to dissemble, whereby many young persons might think that Eleazar, at the age of fourscore and ten years, was gone over to the life of the heathens. And so they, uh, through, my, uh, through my dissimulation, and for a little time of a corruptible life, should be deceived, and hereby I should bring a stain on, and a curse upon my old age. For though for the present time I should be delivered from the punishments of men, yet should I not escape the hand of the Almighty, neither alive nor dead. Wherefore, by departing manfully out of this life, I shall show myself worthy of my old age, and I shall leave an example of fortitude to young men. If with a ready mind and constancy I suffer an honorable death for the most venerable and most holy laws, and having spoken thus, he was forthwith carried to execution. And they that led him, and had been a little while before, more mild, were changed to wrath for the words he had spoken, which they brought, which they thought, I, with the stripes, he groaned and said, O Lord, who hast the, the holy knowledge, thou knowest man, manifestly that whereas I might be delivered from death, I suffer grievous pains in the body, but in soul and well content, Suffer these, because I fear thee. Thus did this man die, leaving not only to young men, but also to the whole nation, the memory of his death, for an example of virtue and fortitude. So a few considerations here. A sacred author gives a moral or an explanation. Remember that sacred scripture, first of all, it is history. It is a history book. And then you notice when you read the Gospels, it doesn't say Caiaphas was bad, and our Lord Jesus Christ was good, and Peter made a mistake, and Judas did something wrong, and John was good. It doesn't say any of that. All it does is tell us the history. The sacred scripture is not a religious book. It is a book of history, a book of real story of what happened in the real lives of men. This is the type of book that this is. So it is very rare that in this history book, there is an occasional stepping aside out of the history in which the author the human author, inspired by the divine author, who is the Holy Ghost, explains what is happening. And this is one of the few instances in the, in the book of Maccabees, chapter 6, where the sacred author decides not just to tell the narration of the death of the two women who circumcised their babies and were thrown with their babies off of the walls, and of Eleazar, the famous old man of the book of Maccabees, who was 90 years old and was told that he should eat of the swine's flesh. And there was... And, and notice here, it speaks of the wicked pity. There it says that uh, the, 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 the author stops his narration. He's telling the story of the history, and others are that what happened, I beseech you those who, and now I beseech those who consider the things that happened, not as being for the destruction, but for the correction of our nation. For it is a token of great goodness when sinners are not suffered to go on their ways for a long time, but are presently punished. To deal with us so as to suffer our sins to come to their height and, and to take vengeance on us, but then therefore he never withdraws his mercy from us. But though he chastises his people with adversity, he forsaketh them not. So that the that uh, the holy author tells us that there is one that God allows his his nation, his own people, to turn to wickedness. And notice the wickedness of this book. Just in Ezekiel chapter uh, Maccabees chapter six points out all the things that are happening right now. An old man of Antioch, an old man of Antioch was sent by the king. We see here that where are we in this present age of the church? We are in an age guided by old men. 
Old men that are old in their wickedness. Old men that are very wise, who have spent their entire lives, generation upon generation upon generation, spreading the kingdom of Satan. That there has been a long, long preparation of hundreds of years to get to wearing masks. There has been a long, long generation of hundreds of years to get to the six-foot distancing. A long generation of hundreds of years to get to 178 countries to make laws that you must wear a mask or you will be arrested. You will dress in certain clothing. And this is done in order to mock. And this is made here in the book, the book of Maccabees. Now neither were the Sabbaths kept, nor the solemn days of the fathers observed. Neither did any man plainly profess himself to be a Jew. And that's been about for us for a long time. It has been many, many years that Catholics go around and no one professes themselves to be a Catholic. For this time, and where were they? Remember the land of this people is called Israel. In the land of Israel, where only Jews live, and a few men came on the outside, no one professed themselves openly to be a Jew. We are in a Catholic parish. We are in a Catholic diocese. We are in a Catholic church. We are in Catholic countries. America, unfortunately, is not a Catholic country but claims to be Christian, and Catholics are supposed to be able to operate freely here. But in Catholic countries, in Catholic families, in Catholic churches, in the Catholic workplace run by a Catholic businessman, no one openly professes themselves to be of the true religion. We are exactly as in this time of the Maccabees. No one openly professes themselves to be a Jew. But they were led by bitter constraint on the king's birthday to the sacrifices, and when the Feast of Bacchus was kept, they were compelled to go about crowned with ivy in honor of Bacchus. He is a preparation. One day we will be made, you will must wear a mask in honor of Bacchus. You must wear a mask in honor of the new Antiochus. Antiochus Epiphanes, who is the king that Judas Maccabeus is fighting against. And, and this is leading up to the day when Matthias will stand up and say, no more. And they say, well, he and his sons will fight against this great wickedness. But these are Jews who offer false sacrifice. And then it says, women threw themselves in the sanctuary. They were practicing adultery, and houses of prostitution became the church. And women threw themselves in the sanctuary, and women put themselves upon the altar, and they participated in the sacrifice. 155 years before Jesus Christ was born. Remember, we often believe that we are in new times and that we are in times unprecedented by all of history. But it turns out that Judas the Hammer already dealt with these times. Judas Maccabeus already dealt with these times. Eleazar, at the age of 90, dealt with these times. And notice in this chapter 6, we note the importance of old men. It is a war between two old men. One, his name is not given. He is the old man of Antioch. And the old man of Antioch, these are the Rothschilds. These are the Bilderbergers. These are the... Are they young men? No, they are old men of Antioch. An old man of Antioch is leading this wicked charge. George Soros is not ten years old. And neither is Bill Gates. And they are, by the way, nothing. They're little sacristans or... Water, water, water boys and a football team. That's what their level of importance is. Just keep that in mind. The real men of value, George Soros is a water boy or a ball boy. When, you, when, a football, when, a football, when a quarterback throws the ball, he gets to run out in the field and pick it up and bring it back. That's his claim to fame. Doesn't even get on the camera. But the fact is, that's his value. Keep that in mind. He's nothing. He's nothing. When he dies, he'll go straight to hell, and some other nothing will take his place. But the real leaders are behind them, and they are old men. They are not in the front pages. An old man of Antioch came to, to Israel and his job was to spread evils. His name was not given. He was sent by Antiochus Epiphanes, who was a symbol of the Antichrist. And he said, this is how I'm going to bring great evils upon the people of Israel. There will be the opening of gymnasiums. There will be the worship of sports. There will be the bringing of women into the sanctuary. There shall be a new worship inside the temple. There shall be a, a persecution of those who try to live by the old ways. And there shall be a putting to death, not in the beginning, but a little bit later. We are now in that stage where it's time to start putting us to death. It's time to start putting into camps. 
It's time to start making that change. And so a great evil fellow servant would not conform themselves should be put to death. Then was misery to be seen. And the two women were accused of circumcising their children, and they were killed with their infants. And others met together in caves that were near, and were keeping the Sabbath day privately, being discovered by Philip, were burnt with fire, because they made a conscience to help themselves with their hands. So that there is, they were worshiping privately. Uh, we're having mass in a house. You're having mass in some place here and some place there. And what happens? They discover that they were worshiping privately, and they pulled them out and burnt them with fire because they made a conscience. Now, it's interesting about the making of a conscience. When we worship privately, nobody is supposed to know about it. We are not yet at that point. We should be open with our worship, even though it's in houses. We invite all to come. It's open, this worship. The time will come and must truly become private. But what is happening? There's still, if you're going to practice the faith, it will be done privately, and they will come and arrest you. A few weeks ago, a priest that I met in Poland, Father Mikhail uh, Wozniki, is his, one of the easier names to pronounce, in an impossible Polish name, he was said Mass in a place, actually I visited him there about four, three, two or three years ago, his chapel is about the size of this living room. Maybe even a little smaller. I think smaller than this, not as big as this. He was saying Mass in this convent a couple weeks ago in Poland. And Poland is the, is the land where they don't let the Muslims in. They told them, you can't come in. And Poland is the land that said, we want to consecrate our land to the sacred heart. And Poland is the land in which they're supposed to be more strong and standing up against this coronavirus stupidity. This was in Poland. So Father Wozniki, a couple of the cope on after Mass, and there are maybe five, six people at his Mass. That's the size of the congregation. But he was saying it in chapel. The police came in. And the police, he's maybe 55 or 60 years old, they grabbed his 75 or 80 year old man that was serving his mass. And they dragged him up and they threw him in the patio. And they arrested him and threw him in jail. And it says in the report in Poland that the, the priest in charge, how did they get caught? The priest in charge of the convent called the police. And the police came, and they continued to say their rosaries. It's all filmed on video. They continued to say their rosaries. They continued to pray. And they were picked up in their prayers, and they were dragged out and thrown in the paddy wagon. In a Catholic country, that's against the garbage that's going on. And they threw them in the paddy wagon. I don't know if Father Gozowski is still in prison or not. But he was thrown in jail. Because they weren't wearing masks and they weren't social distancing in a private place where maybe six or seven people were at the mass in Poland. And it says in the little article, out of mercy, out of mercy, the, 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 the priest in charge, no one's priest in charge, called the police to help save them and keep them healthy. There's nothing else you can do with an 80 year old man and drag him down staircases and throw him inside a vehicle. That have, gives him exercise. And there's nothing healthy to do with a priest and drag him down the streets and his, down the stairs of vestments and throw him also in the paddy wagon. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, A man's enemies shall be those of his own household. He wasn't speaking figuratively. It'll be those of their own household. These shall be the enemies. Father Pro escaped the police so many times it wasn't even funny. But one day, his cousin decided to turn him in. And he became martyred. And so it is in the history of mankind. We are going to say, well, I mean, we need to be safe. We need not worry too much about being safe. Because don't worry, your evil neighbor isn't going to turn you in. It's going to be your friend. I've been turned to the police multiple times in my priesthood, mainly because of, quote, unquote, building things without a permit. And every single time, it was a parishioner and a parishioner and a parishioner and a parishioner. The Masons were going to do it, but they, didn't get, they weren't able to. Always the friend is of his own household. The enemy is those of his own household. So in any case, they are compelled to do these wicked things. We are not in new times. They met together privately on the Sabbath to keep it holy. Now I beseech those that shall read this book. This is when... The Holy Ghost comes in and says, Be not shocked at these calamities. 
Look, they consider the things that happened not as being for the destruction, but for the correction of our nation. God is allowing the wickedness of our church to be exposed for the correction of our nation. And here we come into a problem. Good, but the answer is not so good. A letter to the, uh, to the Pope, uh, to the President Trump. Just another new one. He wrote one back in June. Another one he just wrote last week on the Feast of Christ the King. And pointing out to him again that there are great evils. And he did say one minor... I know he's writing to President Trump. He's trying to write in such a way as to help him to stand for what's right. He did say there's a kingdom of God, the good versus the evil, without ever mentioning either God directly or Satan directly, but it's still clear exactly what he's talking about. But he says, these people are trying to do liberticide. New word, I guess. These people are, these evil men are trying to do liberticide. That is, he's telling Trump, that the, these wicked men who are doing, a, who are doing a, a reset, they're calling it the global reset, because you have to, oh, we live in the age of computers right now, and you've always got to reset it, reboot. If you have an Apple computer, you don't have to reset, but if you've got a Windows computer, you do, because that's PC. So if you're PC, you've got to reset. But there are going to be a global reset. He says, they are calling it the global reset, and they're trying to make a one world government under Satan. These people are trying to remove liberticide. That means these people are trying to take away freedom. And this is not true. The Satan is not against freedom. Satan is against God. And Satan does not want to destroy freedom. Satan wants you to freely turn against God. He does not succeed if he destroys freedom. If he actually destroys freedom, this happens in the case of a murder. If you're standing on top of the Empire State Building, and you have now a desire to fall off of it, and the man comes to you, and struggles with you, and moves you, and pushes you, and throws you off the building, you fell and you died. But you did not have the freedom to die. Your body was constrained. You were picked up by a stronger man. You were thrown off the building. You're not guilty of suicide. You're not guilty of being angry and fighting. You're trying to defend yourself. That's a good thing. You, you didn't succeed. That's okay. You were thrown off the building. There's nothing wrong with that. And you got a nice little win before you went to eternity. Nothing wrong with that either. Then you splattered. Remember one of, my, one of our brothers, our holy brothers, you reminded me in the past, a bit, one of our holy brothers, he left the society. He came back. He was a hot-tempered brother. But he would, but oftentimes, but one time he actually see one guy came up to him and said, I want to commit, I'm going to commit suicide. Well, how are you going to do that? He said, well, I'm going to go up to the top building and jump off. He said, don't do that. Why don't you go to the ocean, go in the ocean and drown, then the sharks can eat your body, and no one has to clean you up. You go, oh. then the guy that commit suicide. It's an unusual method. Uh, it did work. Don't, but don't recommend it. But nonetheless, the fact is, you're going to go and jump off of the roof? Roof? No. But here's the situation. The devil does not want to take away freedom. The devil is not trying to stop your rights given to you by human rights. The devil wants you to freely serve and adore him. Consider the three temptations of our Lord Jesus Christ. The devil did not force, he did not know he was God. He did not force that man to pick up bread. He didn't force him to throw himself off of the pinnacle. He did not force him to kneel. As an angel, easily the devil can make bread go down my mouth. Easily. Pick it up and shove it down my mouth. I have not knelt and I have not eaten. The devil is not trying to destroy freedoms. The devil is trying to destroy, destroy God. Now, God made us creatures of free will. We do have free will. And our free will can be used either to freely know and love and serve Him, or freely turn against Him. And we shall be judged based on my use of my freedom. You can all tell me that you must worship Satan, and we'll make you poem. No problem. And if I become Pope by Satan, 
and go to judgment. The devil made me do it. They forced me to do it. No, absolutely not. We have a free will. We can freely choose either to follow Satan or to follow God. Now the devil will try to create circumstances where it's very difficult to follow God, but he will never, never, never practice liberticide. He will not kill freedom. Of course, the card means by that your house, because they already say. You don't have the right to go into a building without a mask on. You don't have the right to gather and assemble. These are taken away of quote unquote freedoms. But in fact, the answer is not to bring back our freedoms. When Mattathias and Judas Maccabeus, the greatest of the Maccabees, which is why all his brothers are called Maccabees, Maccabee means hammer. Judas was the third son of Mattathias, the leader of all five of, his, of, of them together, his four brothers and himself. And what are they, what is, why are they called Maccabees? Because they stood as hammers against the laws of Antiochus Epiphanes, against the corruption of their foods, against all the, the abominations that took place. And many unlawful things took place on the altar. Notice what Judas would do later. It was in the reading of Maccabees 1 last week, covering this a little bit later episode than this. They went and they, the women did great abominations upon the altar. They did abominations upon the altar. And then, and that the, the, the altar, though, they did not damage. And when the end of the time came, Judas came into the temple. And it was a desolate. The altar was not damaged. But he gathered together his priests and men, because Judas was also a priest. He was a soldier and he was a priest. And he gathered together his fellow priests and men and said, What shall we do? They looked upon the altar and they said, The altar is not damaged. But the altar was, a, was desecrated by women. And the altar was desecrated by the false sacrifice. And the altar was desecrated by all the wickedness that went on in this temple. Therefore, they took a wise counsel. And they tore down the undamaged altar. And they removed it and put it into a place until a prophet would tell them what to do with those profaned and sacred stones. They then gathered new stones and they built a new altar identical to the former. And then came the time of the sacrifice. And what happened? Priests came out of the woodwork by the thousands. Thousands and thousands of priests came to participate in the sacrifice. And then Judas said, so many priests, where were you last week? Where were you last month? Where were you last year? Therefore, they will later be forgiven. Only those priests who had never bent the knee before the false idols were allowed to be in the first sacrifice. And there were scarcely 200 priests out of maybe 70 or 100,000 priests who had never offered the false sacrifice. Now these things are written for our instruction. And Eleazar, what did he do? Eleazar, it says also what has happened to Eleazar. For there was a wicked pity, it says in the, in the uh, verse 21 there. There was a wicked pity. They had a wicked pity. And they were friends with Eleazar. And because of their friendship, they said, Eleazar, we will give you a meat of the, of the, of the cow. Another, another damned leader, another damned soul, another worthless follower of Satan, with a wisdom that he carries with him to hell and that is forgotten with him. And then there is Eleazar, who at the age of 90, what did he do? He said, I will not. If you let me, if, supposing I escape death, I'll live a few more years, maybe. And that I shall not escape the hand of the Almighty. Here is the challenge of the priest of God. A very wise pope, can't remember his name, it wasn't Innocent III, but it was another pope in the Middle Ages. He was asked by a king, can you please give me a divorce and let me marry a second wife? And the pope wrote back, and he said, if I had two souls, I would perhaps gladly commit a mortal sin and give one soul away for you. But as it is, I only have one soul, so forget it. That was the answer of the Pope. He didn't even say that adultery is wrong and you can't be married twice. He just simply said, I am only a holy father. I'm only a Pope. I have only one soul. I'm only a vicar of Christ. You want me to give up my soul in order that you can have a second woman for a couple of years? Forget it. I will not give up my soul. 
And here is saying as Saint Jerome says in one of his considerations, he says, I will preach the truth, though some listen, though no one listen. Why? Because God listens and he will judge me when I die. And the old Father Lamont in Phoenix used to always say, I don't care about you. You don't judge me when I die. When I die, he's gonna judge me. So if you're unhappy, that's too bad. And the Father son of Lego so he began every sermon every week. But the fact is, he is judged by God. He was judged by God. And he wasn't judged by them. And we are not supposed to care too much about the judgment of men, but rather about the judgment of God. What does Eleazar say before he goes to death? Lord, I suffer in my body, and I am going to die by a most painful means. But remember that I am going to suffer greatly in my body, but I am most content because I fear thee. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what we need right now is the fear of the Lord. And we don't want to offend our Lord. Then it was well, very commendable that, that uh, Colonel Vigano, Bishop Vigano, is saying he is like a voice of one part of the wilderness, and he is. And he is saying some good things, but he's trying to perhaps say that we must be, there is an evil force, an evil organized cabal, which there is to bring about a one-world government, though he doesn't say it that clearly, that is going to bring in the reign of the Antichrist. We are in the world preparing for the reign of the Antichrist. Now this destruction, he does say, and it came to an end quickly, because Antiochus will die. By the hand of God, he shall die. His reign shall be three and a half years. And God, and, and here also, is, we see the idea of quickly is in the book of Maccabees, the Blessed Virgin Mary, she said it at Our Lady of Quito in La Salette, uh, in La Salette in Fatima, that there's taken years for it to build up to its height, but it shall end quickly. And here the Holy Author says, in the book of Maccabees chapter 6, the Lord lets it end quickly, whereas with the wicked ones, he allows it to drag on. And when they reach the fullness of their sins, he meets them with their vengeance. But us, he allows there to be a great sins among us that we might be corrected rather than destroyed. And then he shall end quickly this great calamity. And he did end quickly by the victory of the Maccabees. He did end quickly the wickedness of Antiochus Epiphanes. He killed Antiochus by his own hand. By God killed him by his own hands. And not by the hands of men. As the Antichrist shall also be slain. This present crisis shall end quickly. But we don't know the day of its ending. We don't know the day. What must we do? Stand faithful and fear God rather than men. There is going to come a time when we will be executed, when we will be dragged off to camps because we worship privately. We will be dragged off to camps because we are not as the rest of men in our external manifestations. You must dress like the Gentiles. You must be like the Gentiles. The women must not dress as ladies. The men must are now more and more dressing like an effeminate, you must not behave as men. Women must not behave as women. You must not be known as Catholic in society. You will not profess that you are a Catholic. And then take on the ways of the Gentiles. And if you don't take on the ways of the Gentiles, they shall be burnt with fire, cast off headlong from the walls, and put to death and brought the FEMA camps. Our ancestors were in camps. Our ancestors were cast from the walls. Now we hope that when the day comes, that the communists come to our door to arrest us, that we have the strength and fortitude. The only way to prepare for that day is to know, love, and serve God in the small adversities of today. To be faithful today, to not compromise today, to stand firm today, and to have the love of God be the center of our hearts today. And then whatever day the great trial comes to the door, we'll be ready. We'll be ready. But in any case, it's first here in this battle and that uh, and follow the great example of Eleazar the great man of the book of Maccabees who, who is remembered for him says the Holy Ghost and he is he died in great glory at the age of 90 the other old man of Antioch died in his bed and is forgotten we don't we must remember also that old men have responsibilities young men go out in the world physically because they can <coughs> But the old man has responsibility. The old man must be ready to die. The old man was ready to stand for what's right. The old man must guide by his example. The old man must live by faith. And the trouble we have today is old men live by God. 
Let the old men live by faith. Let the old men live by God. Let them be an example to the young men, and then young men will persevere. For it was a battle between the old men of Antioch, who wisely and perfectly followed his leader, who is called Satan, and the old man Eleazar, who was one of the few that wisely followed his leader, who is called God, and Eleazar won the day. And the old man of Antioch is dead and forgotten. And so the old wicked men of our times, they shall be dead and they shall be forgotten. But where are the old men of faith, the old men of charity, the old men who have God as the center of their lives, in order that they might pass on this wisdom to the young men? Let the old man fight the old man. The old man of sin versus the old man with the love of God and the fear of God. And so let's pray that the God send us not only young men to fight, but old men who fight with faith and charity, as Eleazar did, as St. Simeon did, and so on, so on, and so on. Glory bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.